Welcome to another episode of Know Your Mutants. Special guest star, best friend Tabitha, is with us in the studio to share her insights on this topic that affects us all. Thank you, Rhonda. Today, I'd like to talk about a subject near and dear to my heart, the Nightkin. Ooh, you must know a lot about the Nightkin, best friend Tabitha, seeing as how you are one. That's true, Rhonda. I am in a unique position to speak to the natural superiority of my kind. Our story begins, as most stories do, with the Master. Our glorious leader had created the Super Mutants, but something nagged at him. What was it? Good question. I can do better, he must have said to himself, and boy did he ever. A new type of mutant was created, stronger, faster, smarter, more dangerous in every way. We were to normal super mutants what they were to humans, and they were told to defer to us in all things. And you're the leader of all the Night King, correct? Yes, as the highest ranking Night King alive, my voice speaks for all Night King everywhere, ever. Which is why all super mutants should do what you say, right? That's right! My position of supreme authority must never be questioned! One last thing. Is there any truth to the rumor that all Nightkin are slightly crazy from their overuse of psychologically damaging pre-war technology? None at all, Rhonda. There you have it, Utopitha. Nightkin, your benevolent overlords, who are most certainly not crazy. We'll be back after this. Huh, Mr. New Vegas sounds really weird today. He must be having a cold or something. Anyways, hey everybody, TBG Hunter here, and welcome back to more Fallout New Vegas. Last time, we went into the last two remaining vaults of New Vegas, as well as Vault 3, uh, to get the last of the components for the air purifier here in Hidden Valley. We also picked up the pulse gun from Vault 34 to help with Veronica try and show that the Brotherhood should probably step out of isolation and be more open about uh, their technology hoarding. And today we're going to be heading back into the bunker to hopefully finish up our work for the Brotherhood of Steel and, well, give Veronica her say towards the Elder. And hopefully, 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 Torres! will be out of her little hidey hole, and if not, I am nuking this location. I don't care if I am evil for doing so, it, it, I just need to relieve the stress. But thankfully we are out of those vaults and finally back onto the surface, and by surface I mean going back into a, a bunker to, you know, go back underground. I don't know where that thought was going. Uh, but the thing is, uh, as much as I say, Torres, where is she? Veronica, do you know something I don't know? Are you hiding something from me, girl? Don't look at me like that. Hopefully that actually moved Torres into a location where I can actually talk to her, and then I will finally be a happy person for once. And, you know, the Brotherhood won't get nuked into the next area code. Knowing my luck, though... Yep. I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm not that evil. I may be angry at, at having that entire area glitched out on me and I'm never going to be able to recover it. But I'm not that evil. I am a dick. But I'm not, like... Okay, I'll shoot people in the back of the head if they have something I want. Then that was a... Watch someone take that out of context. But only if they attack me first. I won't, I won't sacrifice the entire Brotherhood of Steel because it, it suits my agenda to keep them alive over one dumbass quartermaster. Let's get back in the... Let's get back to the Elder and... Show them this pulse gun so that we can hopefully tell them that, hey, things need to change around here. Elder? Eh, Veronica, you always have to take your sweet time. Come on. Is that even, like, blocking her, like, AI's pathfinding? 
I guess so. Elder, we have news. And by news, we mean a present. Veronica, I hope... I brought you a present. We found a gun that disables power armor. One of these could defeat the whole Brotherhood. We have to stop limiting our focus to military technology. It won't save us. That could be the only one of its kind. That's not the point. Technology won't win our wars. We need numbers, new recruits. What does the Codex say? A bunch of closed-minded bullshit. We do not help them or let them in. But... We keep knowledge they must never have. Give it a chance, for me. I can't stay here and watch us waste away. I'm sorry. We'll die out. I know. Come on, I can't listen to this anymore. Well, that could have gone better. Anything to say? He wouldn't listen. The truth was right there staring him in the face. How could he not listen? Maybe if we had a stronger case, he'll change his mind. No. Our case wouldn't be any stronger if tomorrow they all died when their energy weapons backfired. I just didn't expect that. There was no getting through to him. How can I help them when they won't accept it? Will anyone else listen to you? It wouldn't matter. The Elder has final say. The hell of it is he's one of our most progressive members. If I can't get him to agree, it's hopeless. So... You know what? You seem like an upstanding girl. Maybe you should take over. Huh. Well, that's... imaginative. But it's not really for me. I couldn't get one of their most reasonable members to accept a rational argument. I don't see them coming out in droves to support my coup. And that's really not what the Brotherhood needs right now, anyway. They're hanging by a thread. So, where does that leave you? I... I don't know if I can stay. Maybe it'd be better for everyone if I left. Spent my life... somewhere else. Work with the followers of the Apocalypse, maybe. Put my knowledge to some good use. Or I can stay here with the people I care about and do... whatever I can. Until it comes to a slow or sudden end. Uh, what about the followers? Okay, so take the Brotherhood, replace their knowledge of super weapons with half as much knowledge of medicine and farming, sprinkle in a little compassion for people outside their group and healthy disrespect for authority, and voila, followers. I never really considered joining before, but now that I think about it, it really sounds like it could be a good fit. Doesn't it? Veronica, you say they don't have any interest in building super weapons, yet they outfitted Eddie with one of the most powerful super weapons that a companion can have. Just saying. Uh, you know what? You're the only one who can make that decision. I can't really make that choice for you. Not even a hint, huh? Jeez, I really am all alone on this one. I guess I'll stay. If I left, there wouldn't be any coming back. It might be something I'd instantly regret. Things are going to get harder for the Brotherhood before they get easier. I should support them in whatever way I can. Let's get going. I'd like to get my mind off all of this. And some fresh air would do me some good. Yeah, true. I do need now. to turn that purifier in. The air is getting a little stale down here. Oh, that's weird. Why is this door closed? It never closes. Alright, well, before we leave... Uh, Hidden Valley. Let's go talk to Lorenzo and give him the components for the air purifier. And he should be... No, that's just a knight. Is he even in here? Oh, yeah, there he is. Of course, I could just look at my compass. Good to see you. Alive, that is. Have you found all of the components yet? Yep, they're all right here. Really? I mean, that's great. I knew you could do it all along. I'll get right to work and Two scribes these. stare longingly into each other's eyes as we have as we have I'm a sure conversation in between them. His shoulders. Some impressive power fluctuations coming from Truly their love could possibly save this brotherhood, but god damn it. They're just too ashamed Hello, to say it to each other. Elder, you can breathe a little easier now, and hopefully maybe this will help change your mind about stuff. Back again, I see. Have you found all the components we need? 
I did. Lorenzo is on it. <sighs> Good news for a change. Your efforts have humbled me, outsider. You have done more than I could expect, even from my brothers. Moreover, I've been going over the scouts' reports and keep coming up with the same conclusion. The NCR is not the threat I've believed it to be. We should not have had to rely on your help in this crisis. I believed my actions were guided by caution and prudence, but I now see the truth. People called me a hero after what happened at Helios, but I left that battle scarred by fear and have allowed that weakness to govern my actions. That ends now. I will undo the wrong I have done my brethren and lift the lockdown. With luck, we will once again flourish. Please, take this. It is a small token of my thanks, and scarcely begins to repay the debt owed you, but is all I am allowed to give an outsider. This key will allow you to use our safe house to the northeast. I hope it will prove useful in your travels. Ooh, that could prove useful in my travels. I will be sure to pay that place a visit after my work here. Elder, is there any other work I need? Welcome, that needs outsider. Done? Welcome. The lockdown has been officially lifted, and everyone seems to be in good spirits. With the surface open to us once again, Harden's already started talk of sending a force out to attack Helios, but I hope to dissuade him. What can I do for you? I can kill him for you. I wish to join the Brotherhood. You've certainly earned the right, but I'm afraid there's a slight matter of protocol that must be dealt with first. Exceptional individuals, like yourself, are sometimes allowed to join the Brotherhood if they perform a valuable service for it. While your actions up to this point have been commendable, I am afraid they don't quite qualify as such a service. However, I do have another task that fits the bill rather nicely. Would you consider undertaking it? Come on, I've literally been over this entire wasteland to help the Brotherhood. Eh, that depends on the task. I mean, if it's only one task and one easy task, then it shouldn't be that hard. Do not hesitate, my friend. Learn from my mistake and go boldly, one way or the other. All right, what's the task? As one of our patrols discovered, the mutants just to the northeast have become strangely violent in the years we were secluded. However, this turn of events could also be an opportunity. We mostly left the equipment of the communications array there alone, out of respect. As the inhabitants have now proven themselves hostile, no more respect will be accorded them making their equipment fair game. I want you to head up to the summit of Black Mountain and install this remote signal transmitter in one of their consoles. It will allow us to tap into the radar and other detection systems running there, assuming they're still operational. If we're going to operate on the surface again, it would be nice to do so with as much information at our fingertips as possible. Good luck. All right, well, that's understandable. And of course, the radio did talk about uh, mutant, the mutants there, so maybe we'll see who this radio operator is, and who knows, maybe we'll find a new friend up there. And Veronica, I hope you're happy. We could have waited just a little bit more, and your elder would have said, you know what, things need to change, we're gonna open up our, open up the lockdown and let more people join the Brotherhood. I mean, I'm an outsider, and he's given me a chance to. Isn't that what you want? Actually, what I really do want is for Taurus to finally get back to her station. Come on. I've literally done everything I can to make that girl do what she wants. Or, well, make that girl get back to her position. Now, it would be nice if that was her just walking towards me. I hate you so much, Torres. I hate the Legion less than I hate you. Because now that laser pistol is just going to be sitting in my inventory for the rest of my life. Just mocking me. Forever. And ever. Does it actually have weight to it? Because if so, that's going to be so mean. Uh, let's see. Uh, missing laser pistol. Yep, it's an extra three pounds that's going to be permanently stuck in my pocket. Lovely. And with what's coming up, and strength is going to be kind of a needed commodity. Yeah, yeah, I, I really hate Torres even more now. And I'm sure some of you probably know what I'm talking about when I say I'm going to need as much room in my pockets as needed if I want a good, let's say, payday. 
But that's not going to be for, like, I don't know. I want to say roughly around six more videos before I get into that. So possibly less. Um, we heard Veronica talking with the Elder. We won't stand for this. Your, your helmets, they're, they're clashing with your armor. It, it, it's, my OCD-ness is kicking in. Why the hell are you wearing T-45 helmets with T-51 armor? It reminds me of that image of, like, when your armor gets the best stats, but it looks not, but it does not match. But then again, it's T-45, a T-45 helmet. It does not give you the best stats. I mean, I guess they could be running on, like, it's, supplies is so scarce, so they need to recycle old helmets with newer armor. I don't get what the big deal is. High Elder Maxon didn't just found the Brotherhood. He defined it. To serve in the Brotherhood is to serve his ideals. Our way of life is based on them. We know no other path. There is no other path. With her leanings, Veronica spits in the face of every knight, paladin, and scribe to serve in our ranks. Uh... This isn't your place. You're neither a head scribe nor the elder. Their sentimentality prevents them from administering justice. Our duty is to the Codex above all. Something your companion has forgotten. And that gives us the authority to make it our place. Ideals are strengthened by the challenges they endure. Veronica's questioning did you a service. Hmm. She'd be doing a greater service by carrying out her duties and not trying to undermine the Elder's authority. This had better be the last time her loyalty falters. You've been warned. Besides, Veronica said she's staying in with the Brotherhood. Also, there's a fun fact. Uh, God. I should get used to this, I guess. People get desperate. They turn on each other. First thing to go is trust. I don't think it's ever going to be the same for me in there. Knowing no matter what I do, it's going to end badly. But they're all I have. Are you still going to travel with me? Yeah. I've got the rest of my life to help them out. I could spare a little while to see things through with you. Alright, well that's good to hear. Uh, it's not too late to change your mind. No, I think it is. I have to be resolved about this. If I waver, it'll just make things harder. They need me, and I'm not going to abandon them. Alright. Whatever you say, I'm not going to judge. Yeah, yeah. I'm just here alone for the ride. Veronica has received the Bonds of Steel perk, substantially increasing her armor. So now she is literally a walking, punching tank. You know what? Just to fill out the tank roll. Where is it? There. Looking good, girl. Looking good. Got my two favorite companions along with me. Well, Cass isn't along with me for the ride, but... That's just the limit of having to only have two partners for New Vegas. It's sad, but at least it's more than what Fallout 3 and Fallout 4 give us. Alright, so let's... We need to go to Black Mountain and... Alright, it's straight ahead. I always get confused because I feel like Black Mountain is like... This way... But that's like the exit over towards where the prison is. And you know what? The sandstorm is not doing me any favors. Let's just wait out. There we go. Much better. I can actually see where I'm going now. It's a good thing because the waypoint was just going to lead me straight into, face first into a fence. I need to go over here where the fence is broken. And, of course, I remembered that there is, like, a boatload of scorpions here. And I think the, the centaurs respawn. I know for a fact there is a certain centaur in this crater that I did not acknowledge last time we were here who respawns after three days. So, yes, he is Jesus Centaur. Uh-oh. Eddie's sounding his battle tune. Why are you still shooting your regular lasers? Why aren't you shoot, shooting your super powerful lasers? Yep, there's a centaur. And he's evolved. Oh, nice shot, Eddie. Super nice shot. And that was Veronica's doing. Ash pile. That's just another evolved. Oh boy. And Mo. Where's Larry and Curly? Oh, see you in another three days, Mo. Wait. 
there a centaur over there? Or is just a scorpion? Where the hell are you going, Veronica? <sighs> Sometimes I don't know about that girl. Who knows? Maybe it's like a maybe it's like a stormtrooper helmet that she just can't see where she's going in that thing, so she's just running head first, hoping that she can find whatever it is. Or she just punches a centaur so hard into the floor that he falls through the earth. And that could also be a thing. Alright, well, we finally reached Black Mountain. Well, it took us so long. Oh. This is a dangerous place, human. Especially for your kind. I suggest you turn back. Nang, nang, There's nang, nothing nang, good nang, waiting nang, for you nang, nang. You're a little cold. Your teeth are chattering. What makes this a dangerous place? You must have heard a radio broadcast. The why a human would follow her invitation here is beyond me, unless you didn't listen very closely. The voice on the radio belongs to Tabitha, the supreme commander of Black Mountain, or as she calls it, the state of Utopatha. She took control of this place almost two years ago. The super mutants here do whatever she says, and she says humans are to be killed on sight. Hmm. How did Tabitha end up in control? For years, Black Mountain was a peaceful community. Its leader, Marcus, broadcast an invitation to mutants throughout the wasteland. That's how I found Black Mountain. So did others, most of them second generation mutants. Marcus welcomed everyone. That was his mistake. The community ended up being mostly second gen. Not very bright, but easy to influence. Fine until the Nightkin came along, led by Tabitha. In a week, she had most of the second gens thinking she was some kind of prophet, and that she should be broadcasting her truth, not Marcus. Marcus saw what was coming and decided to leave before things got out of hand. He smashed the radio and left to found Jacobstown. And you say Marcus smashed the radio. Not very well, apparently. <laughs> There's a sad story behind that. Marcus smashed it just fine, but while we were gone, some ghoul named Raul came along. Tabitha turned him into her personal mechanic. A slave, really. See, if I'd been standing down here, I could have warned him before it was too late. And why are you here instead of Jacobstown? Marcus sent me here a couple of months ago to check on Black Mountain. I suppose you could say I came here as a spy. But with no signs of Tabitha's weakening and none of the second gens ready to revolt or to come to Jacobstown, there wasn't much I could do. Down here, on the other hand, I've saved a dozen mutants from heading up the mountain. It's not much, but it's something. I have my own reasons to stay away from Jacobstown for a while. Reasons we won't be discussing. So I've stayed here. Alright, well, what sort of trouble can I expect heading up? The road is a series of switchbacks up to the peak. There are three blockades plus patrols. Sneaking past them would be... difficult. Just before the peak is a kind of shanty village. More second gens there. And then there's Tabitha's compound. Heavily guarded by her nightkin. Hmm. And you seem friendly for a mutant. Keep saying things like that and I won't be so friendly. Not every super mutant is a brain damaged brute. Many of us are just as intelligent as basic humans. And the rest don't really have any choice in the matter, do they? Sorry about that, no offense. And none taken, since you apologized. Hmm, he seems like a very nice fellow. Alright, uh, tell me about the Nightkin. The Nightkin are vicious in combat, and that's if you see them coming. Most don't. They were created to be soldiers and given devices to camouflage them in battle. Unfortunately, the devices drove most of them mad over time. They spend most of their time at the top of the mountain, but patrol the roads after dark as well. You do well to avoid the mountain at night. It's a good thing I waited till like the start of the day. Uh, sounds like you've had enough of Tabitha. What if you h had some help? Help would improve the odds. Help might just make the difference. All right, if you're good enough at what you do to meet me in the village up near the peak, we can talk further. I'll have a plan by the time I see you, if I see you. Good luck. It's going to be a lot harder for you to get up there than it will be for me. That was some really impressive ventriloquism. And he's off! And there's also a nightkin right over there. Was he... Whoa, what just happened to the color? That was weird. Uh, that looks like an incinerator. Uh, you know what? Yeah, I'm just gonna take care of that. Oh, let's see. Oh, that's just a super mutant, not a nightkin. 
One's got a super sledge, one's got a incinerator, apparently. Well, guess we better get to work. I'll try to make this as quick and painless as possible for them. Neil! Oh my, oh my god, Neil. I thought Nikem were the only ones who had stealth boys. Also, the hell? Did that shot send him into an alternate reality where apparently I pulled a clone out of? Is Neil gonna come back and run back towards the village? Uh, evidently not. Well, that's really heavily guarded, which means I should probably go the other way. And by that, I mean I'm probably going to run into even more Night Kenlet this way. Or possibly just more super mutants. Who knows? And yeah, Black Mountain. Oh, God, rocks. Oh, hello. No, not the Pip Boy. What do we have here? We've got a master with a super sledge. One with. I can't tell what he's carrying. One who's using the force to hold up. Oh, no, wait. He's carrying the incinerator and he's got a light machine gun. Well, the biggest threat would be the machine gun. The incinerator really isn't that anything great. Boop! That's one. Whoa! He turned into the, one of those, like, inflatable arm flailing guys you see at car dealerships. Oh god, that was a grenade! Go, run! Thank you, Veronica. Oh, a nice little prize. Where'd he go? Did she punch him through the world or something? And that's its suitcase down there. Huh. Oh, wait, there he is. She punched him pretty far. I didn't get people was tossing grenades. Odd that they never detonated. Oh, I forgot about this guy. Alright. Time for good old All American. Boy, nice if I can actually. Aim properly. Oh, good. I destroyed the gun. But he just picked up the machine gun. Uh, that Hetty took care of that. That's nice. Uh, let's see. Take that flamer fuel. Take that light machine gun. Wait, is this incinerator even worth anything? Since apparently either... Yeah, this incinerator is completely useless. Bye-bye. The wacky inflatable arm flailing tube man. Alright, um Oh hey, there's uh the, my the place where I rose from the dead. I do love the the draw distance in this game. It really tells like how far you've come from where you started. Like over there, literally where I started my adventure. Over there, there's Jacobstown because you can tell because of the snow capped mountains. And if I get to a good angle, I possibly could still see Mojave Outpost's um, uh, statues. Well, I don't see anything. I see a house over there. Yeah, there's some more super mutants down there. I'm not going to bother them. Who knows, maybe if I can solve things peacefully, like I always seem to end up doing, I can persuade them to leave and head towards Jacobstown and, you know, not try to kill me. I would like to know where Neil went off to, because he sort of went up here twice. Oh, oh more fans! Uh, nice, uh, I could be signing autographs, but sadly, I'm not in the mood. Hi, Neil. Uh... Nice to see you here. And he's off again. Neil, do you need some help? Are you sure you're not like a second gen super mutant? Because uh, evidently you don't seem to know where you're going. Hmm. Um... Let's see, anything of value up here? I would like to know where Neil ran off to. 
No, I can't even get into that house because it's bombed out. That's uh, a radiation cesspool. Where did Neil go? Uh, probably up there. Oh god, I hear a radio. I need to kill it. Bingo! Uh, let's see. Still got a little bit ways to go until we get to the main compound. And that's just a master, so... Boop! Uh-oh. Nope, nope. I do like it. the Super Mutants have a unique version of the throwing the grenade where they pull the pin with their teeth instead of, like, just pulling it with their hands. They're big sausage fingers. Trunk, whatever you hear. Money! That's always a nice little commodity. Is there more money in this one? No, oh, it's locked, so there has to be something good in here. Uh, no, no, damn it. That reminds me, I really do need to go and grab that sniper rifle. Even more money! Minigun. Ooh. Oh, got him over and covered. Hi, Veronica. Eddie, where are you? There you are, buddy. Come here. I need to give you something. Something very important. Actually, I do need to give you a lot of things. You have that missile launcher. And take these super sledges. There we go. Much better. Has a load off my back. Where did Neo disappear? Oh, there he is. A pleasant surprise to see you made it. I'm ready to get started if you are. Oh, uh, that depends. What do we need to do? Here's the plan. The gate to Tabitha's compound is guarded by several Nightkin, all of them using devices that make them invisible. I'm going to draw them away from the gate by telling them I spotted an intruder in the village. Then you slip in. That's your plan? I am the intruder in the village. Yes. So try to stay out of sight, because they'll be coming this way. Uh, you just, maybe we should have, yeah, I don't know, done something different? All right. Let it go. There goes one. There goes two. Trouble. And probably shouldn't have had Veronica with me. Do, 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 do. Oh god, I forgot about this one! Uh, those two didn't hear that, did they? Yes, they did. He's got a bumper sword. Uh-oh. Uh, reload. Apparently he has no damage threshold, though. Sorry, Veronica. Oh, that plan could have gone better. Yeah, rebar club. How much is the bumper sword worth? Almost a thousand caps? You know what? I'll take it. I, for what I'm going to be doing right after this mission, it's probably going to be worth it. I've done what I can. The rest is up to you, Dean. You've done what I can to get me killed. Would have been better if I just snuck up and used my explosive ammo. In fact, why haven't I been using my explosive ammo? Uh oh. That guy's got a rocket launcher. That could end badly for me if that thing would decide to go off in my face. So, you know, I'm just gonna. Boop! There. Clean kill. But, ladies and gentlemen, that wasn't any rocket launcher. If we go, can I go up here? It is, in fact, 
Annabelle, the unique rocket launcher. And a nice little assortment of missiles to go along with it. Hmm. A prison building. A storage building. Let's go to the prison. They did say that there was a ghoul prisoner here. So why don't we take a look and see. Um, that requires a key. That is a very hard terminal. Eh. Can't really do anything. I don't really want to spend half an hour trying to go through that terminal. Let's take a look at the storage building. Maybe there will be something better in here. Maybe the key will be in here. <clears throat> Or that training dummy. Oh, hello. What have we here? A broken Mr. Handy. The robot lies inert on the table, giving no indication of having worked recently, or ever. A nameplate on part of the surface is scratched and mostly faded, but you can still make out the faint word Rhonda. Check the robotic circuitry. And quick... Assertion of the robot circuits, AI states that he is set to hibernate, likely to self-defense mechan likely a self bleh, likely a self-defense mechanism after the unit suffered catastrophic damage. Whoever repaired it probably didn't know how to reset its AI. After flipping the right switch, the robot jumps to life. Hello. Could you please direct me to Mistress Tabitha? Uh sure, follow me. Thank you very much. My internal clock says it's been six years, 52 days, 40 minutes, and 13 seconds since I last spoke to her. I hope she hasn't gotten lonely. Oh, she's gotten murderous. Does that count? Is there anything of value in here? I don't remember. Well, yeah, there is a nuclear cola victory in here. That's definitely worth a value. And the trunk I can't get into. And gnomes! Gnomes everywhere! There really isn't any of any of it. Is there? No, I need a key for that. Oh my god! Rhonda? Is that you? It is, Mr. Sabinath. How I've missed you, sir. This stranger here fixed me up right as rain. Is he a friend of yours? Uh, I hi. Don't know how to thank you for bringing Rhonda back to me, stranger. Here, take this. I won't be needing it anymore. Um, okay, uh, will do. Uh, what are you gonna do now? I don't know. It's been so long since I lost Rhonda that I'm not sure. Mistress Tabitha, we should be heading off. Our journey has been much delayed, but we can catch up if we hurry. Come along now. Yes, Rhonda. Oh, I always do love a happy ending. Hopefully they can make their lives better. I know I'm going to be making my life better. And by that, I mean I'm going to become more powerful. Alrighty, so not really a whole lot I could really pump into. Because I've gotten the solution I wanted in the long run. But I decided to up guns to 80, so that way... Uh, things will start uh, being less swaying for me and be more on target. Melee weapons, for what's going to be coming up in the near future, it's actually best I start working into upping my melee a bit. So I upped that as much as I could. I also upped sneak a bit because actually sneak's going to become a very important factor in what's to come with the melee. So that's what I'm going to go with. And now since we're level 32, we can finally start working into more perks. I think we can only get, let's see... Go, went, let's see. We still got. We're up to level 50, so we got a lot of perks left to go before we have to call it quits for this. But what to put it in? Alright, so I went through all the perks, and honestly, I can't think of one that would really benefit me in the long run. I mean, I guess it could go with. Uh, where was it? Uh, I could go with Nerd Rage, but that would only be if I decide to live on the edge and have low health a lot. Uh, I could go with Inst and Stay Back, which would give me a chance to knock back enemies with shotguns, and I do love my hunting shotgun. 
Uh, Center of Mass also seems like a good one where body shots do more damage, but I'm always someone who aims for the head more. Mm. Honestly, I would want to work towards getting the... Um, sniper perk, which would uh, increase my chances at... It actually significantly increases my chance of getting headshots and bats. And I don't remember what... Oh, yeah, concentrated fire. I need... Wait, what? The concentrated fire accuracy has increased slightly with each subsequent hit on the body part. So I need energy weapons at 60 and guns at 60. So I need to actually start working on getting energy weapons. Uh, I guess I can... I'll go with... Where was it? I'll go with Center of Mass, and then next level up, I'll start working towards up, up in Energy Weapon so I can get that uh, perk. So I need 60 Energy Weapons, and was it Gun 60, just to make sure? Yes. And for Sniper, I need Agility 6 and Perception 6, which I can actually easily get done in a really short amount of time. But we're, that's what we're going to go with. Body Shots now do more damage. We gain good Karma because we solved this peacefully. And we now get a storage room full of goodies. And by goodies, I just mean ammo. And a 9mm pistol this late in the game? Really? Please be something decent. Let's see. Magnums. Uh, not really that great. Is there anything in this one that's actually value? Nope, just cheap stuff. I guess people thought this they thought this was gonna be like an early area game, even though you for quests that are related to here, it's actually pretty late in the game. I don't know. Maybe it's a speedrunning tactic. What I do know is let's go pay a visit to that prisoner that we couldn't get in because we didn't have the key. And since Tabitha gave us the key. Oh. Um is there anything in this terminal? Let's see. One has it been having those things to do here? Tabitha wants me to start keeping the logs of all the repairs I do. So here's my first log entry. I fixed it several terminals and that were left over in the intact buildings here. I wonder if she's planning to use them for. Apparently, the mutants raided a caravan today. One of the rifles jammed took about seven minutes to fix. I also performed minor maintenance to the broadcasting tower outside. It's tempting to think that I could just pull the switch there and take in this. A cursed station off the air. No doubt she would have killed me soon afterwards, but it might have been worth it just to see the look on her face. Uh, the mutant with the scar across his face, whom I've taken calling Cuddles, stopped in today and asked me to fix his car. I told him that outside my experience and seriously thought he was going to kill me. Cuddles came in about his car again he even brought a container of gas and asked if that would help i tried to tell him that gas was not the problem but he got really angry and dragged him dragged me outside tabitha killed him herself before things got too ugly at least i don't know i don't have to hear about his damn car anymore tabitha came to me today and said she's concerned about my safety she insisted that i changed the lock on my door and required a password using one of the other computers fixed i Really starting to regret ever fixing those. The password is 12345678 like anyone cares will ever read this. Wow. It's almost like how I used to do passwords. Uh, I mean, uh, it was actually 987654321. Hello? What have we here? Ah, you must be the prisoner. Raul, the Mexican ghoul. Out. Hmm. What do you mean by it took me long enough? Sorry. I assume the only reason you fight past a horde of super mutants and pick the lock on myself is if you heard my cry for help on the radio. But maybe you're just sightseeing. So since the door's open and all, can I go now? That's uh, okay with me. Enjoy your freedom. Actually, who are you, to be exact? Name's Raul. Raul Alfonso Tejada. I'm the mechanic around here. Why is there... Then why did your jumpsuit say Miguel? Probably because it used to be Miguel's. Whoever he was. 
How about if you let me go, huh, Buck? So you're the mechanic around here, huh? <sighs> no. No, boss. I'm a prisoner of the crazy super mutant with the wig and the glasses. I was kind of hoping you were here to set me free. But maybe I'm not a pretty enough damsel for that, huh? Hmm, huh. well, maybe if we put you in a wig and glasses, possibly. All right, enjoy your freedom. Alrighty then. I'll just head out, alone, by myself, into the dangerous waste. Actually, do you want to tag along with me? Sorry, boss, but as much as I like to risk getting killed by your side, you seem to already have some help. All right. Sure, boss. Uh, that's all I need to know. We'll talk more later. Veronica, you've done me a great service over these past several videos. Listen, I want to thank you for helping me out. I'm sorry that things didn't go like I'd hoped, but at least I got the chance to try. At least I know for sure that there was nothing I could do. Thank you for giving me that chance. Hey, don't mention it. Besides, it looks like... Uh, McNamara's deciding to have a change of heart and making things more open at the bunker. So, maybe things will g get better. But sadly, it's time for us to part ways. Why does everyone always say that? Oh, don't worry. We'll meet up back at the Lucky 38. Nice! Can I order room service? Sure, order whatever you want. You definitely deserve it. I need to kill this radio. Phew! Alright. Oh, it's you. You need something repaired or something? <laughs> Actually, would you like to tag along with me? Anything's better than staying here. Let's go. So yes, ladies and gentlemen, our final companion for Fallout New Vegas, Raul the Mexican Ghoul. But first I things first, let's give him some weapons. Mercantile sense, boss. All right, uh, let's give him Lucky and 357. So we'll give him all the 357 ammo we have. And as well as, uh, where is it? Da 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 Inside joke. So if you look into the voice actor for Raul, I'm not here to hold your hand, so I'm not gonna say it. Wow, Lucky actually is not tagged. Oh wait, is it? I can't tell. Raul, hold still. Hold still, damn it. I guess Lucky's not tagged because that's. Hmm. I'm sure you'll be fair and equitable. Oh, boss. no, wait, that is Lucky. I'm just seeing it at a different angle. Huh. But yes, if you know who's the voice actor for Raul, then it's actually a funny little inside joke I just made. And if you don't, then look it up. I'm not here to hold your hand. Oh my god. Where is that? Where is it? Where is that radio? I need to kill it. There we go. Alright, so we need to find the place where we need to put this bug at. And it's probably on the second floor of the radio station. It is. Raul, how come you always find a way to get ahead of me? Oh. Right, the key's back in the first room. I need to find it. Uh, if I remember where that key was. Cola fridge is empty. I believe the key was on the floor somewhere. Actually, I think one of these terminals actually tells you where the key is. Uh, I thought radios would be the thing. Um, radiation? Nah, figure. Uh, let's see. Bottle! Nah. Case, huh? I guess it's a super mutant, so it makes sense. Uh, Marcus, maybe type this. 
the Udis community. Marcus said that I should start keeping a journal to get my mind off Rhonda. He also said I might find something interesting inside this stupid old building. What could possibly be interesting in here? The only thing that works in here is all this junky old terminals. Radio station on the air. The elite alone at last. Safe. Lucky. Went to the camp. All right, that was just dictating uh, about Raul. Why would that key be? If I were a key, where would I be hidden at? Actually, is it even it hidden in here? It might be. Uh, that terminal's offline. Patches, huh? Like, are we talking like gaming patches or like technical patches or like patches of patchwork? A lot of activity from China Satellite Network. The tension is pretty high around here. Frank's been talking about the secu securing his place on one of those vaults for himself and his family, and yet he didn't show up for work yesterday. I think we all know where he went. My God, it's actually happening. I have readings across the board. Of launching is happening everywhere. They might have thrown everything they had. Looks like they didn't hold back either. The computer says we have two minutes until the first missile drops. I can barely type. The mountain shield us from the worst of the blasted bursts. But there's two musket radats. I can't believe these old machines still work. This place looks pretty de defensible. The radiation should keep them majority of people away. Looks like we found a home. At least for now. First things first. We need to get these corpses out of here, poor bastards. Hmm. Actually, wait. No. Uh, I guess maybe the key was outside the, do the door up there. Hmm. This requires key. Oh, what do you have to say? Not to worry, boss. I'm sure killing the boss of one of the families will in no way lead to savage, bloody reprisals against you and your loved ones. You're a very open-minded companion, aren't you, Raul? Uh, oh my god, I hear a radio. I need to kill it. Where is it? Where is it? I need to kill it! I also need to figure out what this damn key is. Oh, wait. There it is. Tabitha's room key. Who hides a key under the stairs? This is getting here before any more copyrighted music decides to attack me. Uh, take whatever's in here. Take everything that's in here. Repair note 3. Let's see what that has to say. Raul, Rhonda made me angry, so I threw this. Now it doesn't seem to work. Please fix. Hmm. Here from the ham radio. Where, if I had to attach something, where would that be? Ah, right here. Install remote signal transmitter. You quickly install device as detected in... As directed immediately, a small green light on it begins pulsating, indicating that it has begun transmitting. Alright. We are done with Black Mountain. That was actually fairly... It was actually pretty fast for all things considered, except for my stupidity at finding that damn key. And yes, the silly Black Mountain password. All right, back to Hidden Valley. Hopefully they don't attack Raul because he is a ghoul. And, you know, the Brotherhood's take on ghouls and mutants and stuff. Although these Brotherhood members seem to be a bit more open-minded when it comes to mutants. Well, so far no one's been given Raul some weird looks, so that's a step up. Elder, I have done yet another task. I hope I'm being compensated well for this work. Greetings, my friend. I hope I can be of some assistance to you. Do you like 
switch weapons every single time I say hi to you because you're now wearing a power fist, even though last time you were wearing... You had, like, a laser RCW strapped to your back. I've installed the device at Black Mountain, as instructed. Yes, we've already started receiving telemetry from it. This will be a great help in our future efforts, and I thank you. Now then, it is my great honor to bestow upon you the title of Paladin of the Brotherhood for meritorious service above and beyond the call of duty. I'm afraid a formal ceremony was out of the question, given our current state. But I hope this will make up for it. I had the knights refurbish a suit of our power armor for your use. It's one of the earlier models, but it should serve you well. Now, I suppose I'm going to have to show you how to use it, aren't I? Oh, please do. I would love to be able to actually wear the thing that you just gave me. Don't I just put it on, though? If only it were that simple. Think of power armor as a machine to be operated rather than clothing you'd wear. With a little instruction, using it becomes as natural as simple movement. But to the ignorant, it's just so much heavy junk. So let's bring you up to speed, shall we? Please do. First, let's go over how to put it on. You open up the bag and just step inside, right? I mean, it's so easy a lawyer can there. do it. I think you've got the knack of it now. You should now be able to wear any kind of power armor you come across. I've also given the order that all of our equipment be made available to you, not just the more mundane arms. You're a member of the Brotherhood now, and your gear should reflect that. Yeah, it'd be nice Lastly, if I can actually you get it! To come and go as you please. You've done so much for us that to do otherwise would be a crime. I just ask that you keep the Brotherhood's interests at heart in all your dealings. Remember that you will always have a home here. Yeah, you seem like a really stand-up kind of fellow. Eyesight for the blind, or to the blind to be exact, is completed. And we were given T-45 power armor. Great, and in such amazing condition as well. I know things are tight around here, but you seriously couldn't, like, you know, make the condition a little bit better? Now, T-45 is arguably the second worst power armor in the game. I love it in Fallout 3. Mostly because it just fits the setting so well. In this game, I honestly don't like wearing it a whole lot. Just because it kind of... This is going to sound weird coming from me. But it kind of just clashes with like the theme uh, and like the surroundings. But... <clears throat> there it is. In all its power armory glory. We got a nice little Brotherhood insignia on the shoulder plate. Actually, wearing the hood with this actually looks pretty kick-ass. And we also got the helmet... Hopefully this thing actually has a working radio. You refurbished it, so hopefully you got the radio working. Let's test it out. Oh, hey, you actually got it working. That's nice. And I still look kind of badass, but not as badass without my hood. And, of course, I'm over encumbered now. Eddie! I require your services. Take Annabelle. Oh, wow, I am really over encumbered. Uh, take the Mumper Sword as well. Eh, take everything else. Of course, I'm eight pounds over encumbered. Take that recon armor. There we go. Much better. Greetings, my friend. I hope I can be of some assistance to you. And now for the main reason that we have come here. The NCR is currently looking to destroy you. I suppose it was only a matter of time. I wonder if, given the NCR's current situation, they would consider a truce of sorts. We've given up our claim to Helios. And we don't have any interest in claiming Hoover Dam, so our ambitions are not at cross purposes. Perhaps it's time for a new strategy. Go to the NCR commander and tell her the Brotherhood is willing to put aside our enmity for the time being. Further, tell her that we are willing to send troops to aid in their coming defense of the dam. My guess is they're in no position to refuse. There we go. Peace all around for every single person. Turn to Colonel Moore and report back that the Brotherhood is willing to support the NCR against Caesar's Legion. Alrighty, so that was a lot of progress done. Next time on Fallout New Vegas, we are going to not head back to Hoover Dam to report our findings. Uh, instead, we're going to be heading back to the Strip so we can give Sarah those abundance of vault suits that I have on me. 
as well as stop by Cottonwood Cove because there is a <clears throat> sort of uh, weapon I need to pick up from that location. And if we have time, we might uh, pay a visit to the Brotherhood of Steel safe house. But until then, I will see you guys next time. Later.